The Witcher season three is officially in the books and it is goodbye for Henry Cavill. Season three was my favorite season so far, which feels a little weird with all the reports that I've seen about, you know, viewership declining and people not caring about the show more and more. Um, it was definitely not a perfect season and I will get into those details, but out of the three seasons we've seen so far, I do think three has been the strongest. This is Fantology. You may have heard of us. So after seeing season two, I actually really liked season two, which you can look back and uh, see that video where I kind of raved about it. I, I really enjoyed it. But now after season, after seeing season three, kind of wondering what the point of season two was. Like it set up the monoliths and there was some character development with Siri. And we got some stuff with the spears, and obviously that's very important, and some stuff with the wild hunt. But we could have had all of those things in season three, and for eight episodes of season two, there was not a whole lot. Like, it really kind of feels like a waste of space there. All of the Geralt, like, none of the Geralt Yennefer character development was really that important from season two. We kind of just hit the reset switch to some degree on season three. So I enjoyed season three but it made me like season two less and i think we've seen this reset button pressed a few times like every season that starts from season one to two from two to three there's been a lot of disconnect between i don't i don't know what's going on behind the scenes but it just seems like a lot of the stuff that they're building up is not that important for the larger story they're trying to tell and i think that really hurts the show and especially with the time gap that we see between uh, seasons of such a big show like this. The audience doesn't remember what happened before and the few sprinkling of clues and, and important, like big important plot points that are going to be important later on in the show. I imagine they're going to try to make the wild hunt in the, in the spears and all of that a big thing, but we're three seasons in and we've just seen hints of it every now and then. And someone who's just watching the show and has not read the books or play the games, they're probably, I, I would be surprised if they really had much of an inkling of what was going on. And not to go into this whole thing that's been covered ad nauseum, but going into season four, we're pressing the reset button again, this time with our big headlining star, and that is terrifying and scary, and we'll see how well this show does, how well they're able to soldier on. Good luck. Another big issue, and I guess it's kind of weird to, just talk about all these issues when I said I liked season three, but I, I'm frustrated by The Witcher because I feel like it could be more than it is and it has a lot of good elements and it's still like not quite as strong as I think it should be. And one of the big things that continues to bug me is I don't care about the plot outside our main three plus Yaskir slash Dandelion. Like outside of those four characters, I really struggle to care about what's going on. I think season three did a better job of finally getting me to care a little bit, but we're three we're three seasons in, and I would be shocked if someone who's not very familiar with the other parts of the property, the the games and the uh, the books, really is able to follow much of the conflict. Like the the story that the TV show is telling is not is not doing a good job of explaining anything outside of the heart of the show, which is Geralt, Yennefer, Ciri, and yes here. In that regard, with those characters, they're doing a great job. And when those characters are on the screen together, I really enjoy it. And I think that's why I continue to watch. Every time we cut over to Nilfgaard or the Squirtile or anything with the Brotherhood, I immediately lose interest. So I know this is not fair to do, and I hate it when, when articles do this, but for the fun of it, let's compare to Game of Thrones. So I think one of the most underrated things that Game of Thrones does is it sets up the conflicts and characters by introducing you to the Starks at the beginning. And then from there, you learn about the rival Lannisters and then the Tullys and the Arryns and you get Daenerys coming in and she, she introduces us to everything in Essos. So it slowly expands the world by bringing in more characters by interacting them with characters we care about already. And so it's just kind of this ripple effect that, that expands the plot slowly but surely and makes us care about more and more. And we have a face to like every faction that characters we care about have interests in so we as viewers then care about them. 
And The Witcher does not do this. I mean, Nilfgaard, for example, I think Nilfgaard is the most egregious. I do not care about what's happening with Nilfgaard. The only connection we have is Emir and Ciri, right? But no one we care about is interacted with Nilfgaard. I don't have much of a reason to hate them other than everyone tells me they should hate them, but I've not seen like much on screen to tell me that Nilfgaard is really all that bad other than the characters saying they are. So that's not done very well. Redania, I think, is maybe the second most offensive in this regard. I don't care too much about Philippa or Dijkstra. I think they are cool characters, but again, the characters we care about have not touched them very much, so why do I care? Because I care about the core characters, and they don't care about what's going on here. And then the next one is Squirtile, and that's, I don't know, I mean, I guess we've we've interacted with them a little bit, but they're just kind of doing their own thing, and I don't care too much about uh, Francesca and her elves over there, so... Now, all that said, it's getting better in Season 3. Uh, Redania got better by introducing us to a relationship between ya- between Radovid and Yaskir, and that was done well, and now I kind of care about Radovid because he's he is a sympathetic character that is interesting, and now he's going to become the king over there. That said, I did not care when Vizimir died. That was supposed to be shocking, right? The king of the nation that we followed most closely is dead, and okay, like, I don't care. That's not that's not a good sign. But I think I will care more about Radovid now that, that he's there. Another example of the show doing better with this is the Brotherhood and Yennefer's connection with them, and especially Tessaia. I think that was well done, and that had some emotional hits when Tessaia died. I think that uh, Yennefer's connection there with the Brotherhood and all the mages is, has made me care a little bit, but it also, again, same same thing, just took too long. And honestly, I hate to say it, but the show kind of suffers from the source material because the books are very much written like this. This is kind of how the story of the books evolves. And I mean, don't hate me, but I did not really like the books. Out of all of the properties around The Witcher, weirdly enough, I think the video games have done the best job of telling a Witcher story. (laughs) Okay, so back to the episodes, the last three episodes that came out recently. So episode six, I thought was solid. It was not great, but it was solid. It was, uh, I mean, the action side of things was good. There was a great fight between Geralt and Vilgefortz. I thought that was that was done great. Any, you know, any Geralt fight is always uh, a big reason to watch the show. They're all choreographed beautifully. I thought there were some cheesy things in the action. The way Phil Evandrel died by just getting exploded, turning into guts, like that was weird and cheesy and kind of dumb. And there was a moment where Kahir was like. What? Fringilla is here? How could she be here? It's like, dude, you came on the boats together. Why would you not know that? So a few just minor things. But again, all of these things just take away a little bit from the show, take me out of the world a little bit. And I think with better writing and, I don't know, better effects around the explosion. I mean, clearly the Witcher effects have been something that I haven't really loved for a while. Um, The prequel show that I can't remember the name of right now had that horrible looking fight uh, at the end and the like the dragon back in season one I thought was dumb so they've come a long way but at the same time the Netflix budget is just not big enough to make these effects really convincing all the time so that does kind of hold it back a little bit also in season six the whole Redania angle needed to be explained more I did not think that totally made sense what they were trying to do the the Nilfgaard thing with Vilgefortz was explained enough I thought that was fine but Redania just coming in and like getting the upper hand so quickly was strange, especially when their coup seemed very clumsy. Because with mages, wouldn't you have to take everyone at the same time? Or someone's going to get loose and start setting you on fire? And they don't get Yennefer or even like come close to getting her, which I thought was weird. So that just seemed clumsy and it made me think like, how have they, how have they done so well in getting all these mages prisoner if from the perspective we're seeing, it doesn't seem like they're executing this coup very well. That was that was confusing. A couple of good things, I'm glad that Rayance died. We've had enough of him, he was getting annoying, and the conflict was getting a little complicated. It's good to just get rid of him. I thought Phil Evandril as well, like it was fine to see him go. I, I think kind of cutting out the middlemen. I mean, this is like a company axing people and it's usually the middle, middle level managers going, and I think that makes sense here for the show. Let's kind of recenter on the big players in the conflict and make it easier to understand. 
And also, I said I liked the Yennefer to say a thing, and I did, but I think it would have hit harder if she died here doing the lightning spell. That would have been just a little more dramatic and cool than her just kind of expiring over the next two episodes. Why not just set up the character stuff with Yennefer and to say uh, an episode prior, and then in episode, episode six when she dies, it is still hard hitting. I thought it was done okay in episode eight, and I felt some emotion, but I think it just would have been cooler if she went out with a bang. Moving on to episode seven. Episode seven was not good in my opinion. We went back to Brokolon with the Dryad, so I think like Goofy and nothing really happened there, and that stretched into episode eight. I did not like that writing decision. And then Siri in the desert just went on and on, and it, it was not enjoyable to watch. It needed to go, th that needed to be 10 minutes less of that, and there were no cuts to different characters. It was just Siri. And I like that they finally advanced her character. She really needed that. She's been kind of a blank slate that Geralt and Yennefer's characters have just built off of, and it's nice to finally see some dynamic to her and really need it going forward because she's going to be kind of on her own and the show's going to have to rely on her more now that Henry Cavill can't carry it with Geralt. So I'm maybe a little concerned that we saw, what, 20 straight minutes of Syria in the desert and I was not captivated by just this one shot of one character. A little concerning. I thought the fight with the bug stone talus thing was cool. Um, but there need to be more exciting things rather than just wandering through the desert and suffering. That was boring. That said, I do think it's a good thing that they finally went back and committed hard to the Falca angle here. We actually saw her come in. So that was good, and that's going to be important for Ciri's character, and obviously she's going to take the name Falca when she's with the rats. The problem again here is we got this explained a little bit back in Season 2. I think Stregobor was talking to the mages and did a little... Uh, magic fire show and talking about Falca. That was fine, but the lack of cohesion between seasons two and three means that most people are not going to remember that and are going to be like, who is Falca? What the heck is going on here? That's not great. On to episode eight, I thought was decent, but maybe a little lacking in terms of a season finale. I thought it did a good job of solidifying a lot of the character development that's happened with Geralt and Yennefer and Ciri really kind of locked in. Um, Geralt has finally made his decision to not just be neutral. Thank goodness, because it's so boring when your main character doesn't care about what's going on with the rest of the conflict. Yennefer has finally decided to really kind of lean into her warm, warm side. I don't know if that's a good way to describe it for Yennefer, but she... You know, with Tissaia, she's realizing that she has a lot to live for, and she's committed to Geralt, and she's committed to finding Ciri, and committed to kind of leading the Brotherhood, kind of, at this point. So I thought that was good for her character. It was a lot better than the weird journey she went through in Season 2. I thought this was just a more mature way of, uh, of showing some character growth. And then Ciri as well, now she's kind of got this conflict, and got the fire magic, and she's scarred for she's finally taken a human life and and she's growing up and she's growing up in a really rough way and on her own and away from the people she loves so this is compelling for season four uh, but i hope that the focus on siri i hope that we can pull it off here because episode seven didn't so all in all i like the witcher tv show i think the internet kind of throws a lot of hate on it but i think that's kind of exacerbated quite a bit and it seems like, you know, Netflix renewing it so early, they're very committed to it. And I, I think, honestly, like, it's a good show. It really is. There are a lot of things that could be better, though. And that's what frustrates me. And that's why I kind of focus this review around uh, my essay of the negatives. I think with some better writing and just some more cohesion from season to season, we could see a much better show. But I think season three was a step in the right direction. So I am now optimistic for the fate of the show, but we'll see. This is a hard one to pin down.